Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And today, I think it's a topic which many of the parents are struggling, or many of the teachers are also struggling. How do we, you know, make these students to start this academic year in a good way? Very, very genuine question, isn't it? But how do we do that? How do we show them that, you know, why do you need to study? What is the importance of studying? Today's children say when everything is available on the tip of the button, why should I be studying? When I want any information, I can get it. I don't have to remember, I don't have to memorize it, isn't it? But yet, what do I do as an adult or a parent or a teacher or a concerned neighbor or elder sister, aunt, anyone, whoever is concerned about children. If a child says, why should I study? What will you answer? Hey, this is the age to study, man, study. There's nothing else that you can do now. You are growing up, just sit quietly. It's a norm of life, you have to study. Does do chill, today's children buy this? Definitely no. They want logical answer. They want proper explanation that suits them. Yeah. So let's understand why to study. One is study will help you to, you know, apart from the subjects, study actually prepares you for life. How does it help to you to prepare for life? In today's world, the way everything is changing often, study will prepare you to adapt to the changes because your mind is tuned to learn new things. Now you would say, but the subjects, how are they going to help me do that? See, over the period of years, the habit develops. You all agree to that? Habit doesn't come in one day or two days. You have to develop with consistency, then the habit develops. Take it, our normal morning chores or, you know, even cooking or going to work. Does that happen just like that? No, from years together that practice brings and then you become a, uh, what do you call, a good professional or a good uh, cooker, <laughs> a person who cooks, I'm just joking, a cooker. That's the way you, with discipline, you achieve what you are achieving and by consistent work towards it. So when you're going to school, what happens? There's a discipline. You wake up at one time, finish your morning breakfast, get ready, go. And in all that process, what are you learning? Different life skills that I need to be aware that I have an agenda for the day. So I need to get up. I need to be presentable because I'm going out. I'm going to the society, right? So I need to take bath, comb my hair, dress up, carry all the books that are required for the timetable. What does that teach you? Be organized for the plan that you have made for yourself. So organizing the timetable, then going to the bus stop where you will meet either your peer groups or peers friends or, you know, uh, parents. The bus may sometimes just go away and you'll be like, oh my God, now what do I do? Critical thinking, creative thinking. How do I take this forward? Catch quickly an auto, take some money from some friend's uh, mother or father and say, auntie, I'll give you that money tomorrow. And then you go to school. You try to keep up the time, discipline. What do we expect? We have to help children also achieve that with our support. Once they go to school, prayer happens, stand in the line. I'm taking you through the day of a child, right? So prayer bell will ring. Children have to stand. They'll have to juggle. Why are you standing before me? But then teachers will tell you, you have a space and that's where you have to stand. 
so what is the learning over here we have to listen to the people in authority and there are certain norms certain rules that we need to follow after the prayers they all go to their individual classes and when they go to the classes they know that you know she is my friend i don't want to talk to him today i'll be upset but yet i sit in the class so you learn to manage your emotions also and not just throw your emotions anywhere everywhere teacher comes she teaches and you say oh now i have to study but why should i study as i told all the skills comes along as an attachment this is what we need to slowly explain children that there are so many advantages along with the books and the syllabus that you study okay when they are studying a specific subject they'll say why should i study history what is the point of studying history what is the point of studying history and they will say what answer will you give a history is something you have to study because if you don't study there is no option that you can drop that subject does that work that way no isn't it today's children won't take it that this is it and you have to do it they need explanation and especially history i'm giving this and i think purnima is here who will explain you why children should study history <laughs> purni can you give them i'll try <laughs> yeah good morning to each one of uh, you how are you all hope you all are doing well hopefully and um, if you don't study history okay it will repeat itself then i don't know what you're going to do so as they say history repeats itself um you know uh, when uh, we meet uh, children you know a lot of them we meet right what happens is that um, if they are say going abroad nowadays the world has become a platform for these uh, students so uh, if they are going abroad and if they have not taken a great interest in history what happens is that they are adapting to a totally new country uh, new citizens and uh, new culture everything uh, reasonably becomes uh, difficult so if you understand that if you are going to uh, europe and uh, if you are in germany what was the history of that place you will understand that uh, why you know people are uh, uh, behaving in a very cautious manner or they are very particular about everything lot of things we learn you know when uh, we go there and if there are uh, people say in the arab countries you understand that what has been the history of that place and why they are behaving in a certain situation so many students when they say no 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 i don't want history we say okay but for your own welfare forget history history is not going to feel bad right if you study history or don't study history but for our own good it helps so if we can understand that world is going to be a platform so many different nuances are going to come in and let me at least understand that if i know a little bit of history and if i take that little interest and like it then automatically uh, a lot of my living my making of friends and you know my moving around with people with cultures is going to be very uh, reasonably easy as easy as ali is going to make it more for you mm. okay <laughs> welcome ali <laughs> yes today i was invited by a very prestigious school they said that uh, you know you must come and address all our students on leadership and whatever they were very particular that it has to be on a saturday now my saturday mornings 11 to 12 are committed to this uh, fb life so i told them that you know i can't do it then they said what about early morning if we have it early mo morning can you come i said okay but can we work out the logistics because the moment you have to go uh, some distance in bangalore the first thing that strikes you is traffic jam so i said is it going to be you know that i make you people wait i get delayed and people say he's just coming like how those ola and those uh, 
about uh, the taxi fellows keep saying five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. I said, no, I'm not going to be doing that. So I made sure that the timing was adjusted in such a way that I went there, I finished uh, everything. In fact, I came back 10 minutes ago, took a little deep breather because I had spent the whole morning, early morning onwards over there. So I wanted to be a little more you know, fresh and positive when I'm talking to you, I managed to do that. This is what happens, you know, if you can adjust your lifestyle in such a way that you start off with, you know, adapting to uh, yourself in the, uh, uh, you know, throughout the time. Now, what happens is, as you know, the Indian education system, as an American professor once told me, when I asked him, what do you feel about the Indian education system? He said, I don't know about your education system, but I do know that you have an excellent examination system. Because the only thing that I hear from people here, educators, is about the exams. Now, that is a very unfortunate thing. Work is going on, authorities, that you know, national education policy, so many things are happening trying to bring about a change. But as of today, you know that children study only for exams. There are very few children who actually study to gain knowledge, to become more competent and capable, to enhance their skills. And that is the reason why we have these people that, you know, there is a sort of run up to the annual exams. Exams are coming, they are very close, you have to study, you stop all your other activities, you do this, you do that. It goes on and on and on, till finally the annual exam takes place. Once the exam is over, you know, children feel that now I can relax. I don't have to bother, I will see after some time. So even though children get the summer vacation, which they did have, you know, uh, the month of whatever, April, May and all that. When they get back, and that's what I was interacting with some of the students this morning also in the uh, school, that when they get back, there is this feeling that academic year has just started. I don't need to put in that much of study. I don't need to, but whatever is being taught today is meaningful. Exactly as Purni was telling you just now about, you know, that if you don't like history, history is not going to feel sad because you don't like uh, it. It is you who is going to suffer because history teaches you lessons of life. History, in fact, repeats itself. People who do not learn from others' mistakes make the same mistakes and suffer very badly because of uh, that uh, attitude. So we have to understand that we need to first change the mindset of the children. If the elders themselves, unfortunately, even some teachers give so much emphasis to the marks and they say, if you don't study, what marks will you get? If you don't get this much marks, where will you get admission? What will you be doing? It's so competitive. Unless you get a good rank in your JEE -E or CET or NEET, then you will be a nobody. Today morning, you know, when I was talking to the principal just before the uh, program, she and her colleagues, there was this uh, discussion where, you know, uh, she was saying that sort of all parents want their children to become something, you know, they say that unless you are a software engineer, unless you are a professional, unless you are somebody, you are nothing, you have to become something, that's why you have to study. I said, yes, ma'am, I do understand. Maybe those parents are a little ignorant about the realities of life. But you, being principal of a reputed school, can you please help the children understand that it is not enough to become something. You have to become someone. And that, if you recall, was the title of Chetan Bhagat's book, which inspired the great movie, Three Idiots. The title of the book was Five Point Someone. It was not five point something. It is taken from our uh, IIT's uh, uh, assessment system that out of 10, you had to score minimum five to pass. 
And in our days, if you do not get that 5.0 and above, you, you were actually thrown out. There were no backs and there were no repeat of the year and stuff like that. So if you wanted to be someone, you had to cross that threshold of 5 point something to become 5 point someone. And everything depended on the, uh, that. The only thing is that there were some who said, I mean, 5 is ridiculous. Even, you know, 7.5, which is required for a first loss is nothing. We have to get 8.5, 9.5, etc. And there were people like us who decided that, okay, 5.1, and that is enough for me. I'm going to get a degree from IIT Bombay, the same as my classmate who's studying 24 by 7. We are both going to get a degree from the same institution. So I am going to be someone and not something. And believe me, I can spend hours telling you about so many of my classmates, colleagues who became someone. And that if we can inculcate in today's children and if we can somehow make them understand why they are struggling. Along with that also comes this thing of teaching them study methodology. We do that in Banjara in case you have any student who does not seem to be understanding how to go about this system of, you know, getting the maximum from each hour of uh, study. We have devised these study techniques. We even have a workbook uh, called study skills. Either you can take the workbook and work with the student yourself or if you feel the need, you can send the student. We don't give tuitions to anybody, but we teach the child how to study. What would be the best way? In that, what do we uh, cover? We cover when to study, which part of the day, to what duration, when to take a break, how, do, how much should be the timing of the break. Then where to study, which is an ideal place where the lighting is good, the seat is comfortable, there is no noise, uh, you know, pollution somewhere, there are no distractions, people passing by the window or the door, so many factors are there. So where do you uh, study is uh, um, important. Then what to uh, study, you know, you have this difficult subject or boring subject, where you should study that during this time when you are at the peak of your energy levels. You should study that for a lesser duration because you start getting bored with it. Take a break and again come back to it later or study an interesting subject and come back. So there's a lot of explanation about what to uh, study. Then, of course, how to uh, study. Each one of us are, you know, using our five senses differently. Some of us are audio. Some of us are video, some of us are kinesthetic, some of us are experiential. A simple thing like there are some students I know who when they read aloud, they learn better than if they read softly. Experiment it and see. There are those who highlight certain things or put up a poster of the important formulae and their definitions and they learn better. There are some who do joint study and they learn better. There are some who study on their own and they better. So once you understood these four things, we come back to the most important you know, aspect of studies, which I think is not being governed, which is why to study. If a student understands the why part of it, you don't have to push the student to study. The student will be motivated himself. If you ask a student, why do you want to play cricket? Why do you want to play football? Why do you want to do music? He has enough reasons to tell you. And those reasons are not only connected to some examination or some you know, performance or whatever it is. The child will say, I enjoy this. I'm good at it. I'm learning so much. I'm in good company. I have a good coach. I learn from him, the time goes beautifully when I'm learning this, this, this. And that is the reason why the same child whom you are desperately trying to wake up in the morning and make him study, the day he has his sports practice, he's up and about at five o'clock and he's going and waking up mommy and saying, quickly give me breakfast because I have to catch the bus. So that is the most important thing. If you want the students at this time of the academic year, when we have just entered into July, and we have got months to go for the annual exam. 
and then of course those who are in 12th and all that all those entrance exams and these and that so this is the time to help children to understand that it that old proverb slow and steady wins the race it is still valid even in today's rat race as we call it everybody is running rushing trying to overtake each other and all these uh, things but it is the tortoise who will in the long run win the race of life not the rat race you like keep reminding even if you win the rat race you are still a rat would you like to be one and that is what we need to help them understand and the most important thing and i am addressing parents or teachers whoever is concerned about the uh, child and the um, study that the more you make it a ding dong battle you must study and the child says no i will not study now no i am feeling hungry i want to go out and play the more it becomes like a battle between the adult and the child the less the child is going to learn you only have the power to physically make a child sit down and supposedly read you cannot make the child put his mind to it and actually learn isn't it and that can happen if we start off with explaining the basic concepts of everything that the child is learning and for that we ourselves need to know i have done innumerable orientation programs for teachers and i asked them what subject do you teach and somebody says geography somebody says biology somebody says kannada and i asked them why and do you know that many many teachers don't have an answer to that it's just because i'm qualified in this i needed a job i got the job so i'm teaching if that is your or even they go to the extent of saying i wanted to be a doctor my parent didn't allow me to do that they said no no you go and do ba and you study history and then you do your ba so here i am history teacher now if you are not connected motivated enthused with what you are teaching why should the children you know connect to you or feel that need same thing with parents reading for example how much i keep on emphasizing please read please get into the habit of reading be a role model to your child those who are lucky to have very small children start off by reading to the child even before he learns how to read and take a joy in that show how you are happy reading that you're not doing it as a service to the child but you are feeling happy reading out those passages when the child a little older get picture books so the child looks at the picture you are reading out the words then start underlining and showing you know important words so there's a picture of an elephant and there is an elephant written over here you underline and show this elephant which you see over here elephant has been written over here you see this river flowing here this word is river is written over here the river has boats going over it this, this, this you read out connect the photos to that then encourage the child to read anywhere and everywhere it could be sign boards of shops for example moment you take a child out you say you feel like buying some bakery item start looking at the sign boards we'll walk down the street you read and tell me where there's a bakery from far away before you see the products in the shelves you should be able to read the sign board and say if the child is still small and unable to read this thing you say okay bakery starts with b so start looking at each of these uh, uh, shops and look for the letter b and generally every bakery has a name so there will be an iyengar bakery there will be a something something bakery so look for the second word the first word won't have b because that will be the proper noun that will be how that bakery identifies its brand name by saying that i am shalimar bakery i am this ab bakery or i am this whatever it is and then connect it once the child starts getting that hang of b then he himself gets enthused and he wants to read further b a k e that way the child goes 
and as the child grows older as you know the issue generally happens when the child comes to high school somehow when the child is in primary school and to some extent middle school the children at least because they want to obey their parents and teacher they study whatever is taught to them they've been asked to do homework they've been asked to do assignment they keep doing it by the time they come to adolescence and high school they start questioning why should i study why is this important what do i gain out of this so what if there is a unit test those marks are not counted in the annual exam so i don't want to put too much emphasis on it and that is where you have to help the child understand that you have to do it on a continuous basis ask a child who is very very you know ad, uh, interested and passionate about sports tell the child that supposing your coach tells you that at the end of the year there is going to be an inter school competition 10 days before we are going to have selections we are going to make you play and we are going to watch who are the best players and those best players are going to get selected so when is the tournament it is in april when is the selection end of march do you say this is only july why should i practice now i'll start practicing somewhere in march last 15 days i'll practice and i'll get selected you know that that, that won't happen if you truly want to be a good player you have to practice extensively and you do it because you are enjoying it you like the game you enjoy the proficiency that you are building and the skill that you are building that is how if you take up that same attitude towards the regular academics and that is what we have to uh, you know uh, understand that if the child understands the significance of why am i studying is given inputs on where when how what to uh, study made into a form of a team work between the adult and the uh, child to help the child understand and progress just to give an example children who are coming up in, in primary school they have addition they manage they have subtraction that borrowing gives a little trouble they manage multiplication they manage then they come to long division and many children who do not have a mathological intelligence they start making stupid mistakes every time they are attempting that uh, long division they make some silly mistake and the answer is wrong now if unfortunately they have a teacher who scolds them saying that how many times i have corrected it and you still make mistakes that's the end of the love of mathematics of the child and whatever he was going to learn if last time he attempted it there were five steps in that long division and he got three correct yes you have to tell him to redo because it doesn't help having three steps correct now he tries it out and he gets four steps correct in the second attempt will you appreciate will you admire will you praise him that within 5 minutes you have gone from 60% correct to 80% correct and then gently explain that you will not get marks because marks come only if all five steps are correct but i appreciate you and when the student sees that type of appreciation then and then only the student gets motivated to study and once that process starts be part of the learning process of the child regardless of whether you are a parent a teacher or a concerned adult help the child by showing your own interest your own desire to keep learning growing evolving and that is what motivates a child more than anything else so i think i can take a one minute uh, break right and sonal is here to update you on what's happening and i should be back very very quickly Lovely tips to help children, right? 
But I have one question. We need so much of patience if we have to get things done from children, right? And to get that patience with expectation again can create a lot of frustration also in the mothers. So if at all you know such mothers who want to do the best for their children, but are getting frustrated or, you know, need some help, please guide them for the free counseling that we offer at Manjara. Or if you think that there are mothers or, you know, grandmothers whose children have been, you know, doing well, independently managing themselves. Well, I don't mean with marks, okay? As long as they are managing themselves really well. And these homemakers or these mothers or these grandmothers are having a lot of time in hand. Do tell them that our DCS Diploma in Counseling Skills admissions are yet open for another few weeks. And they can take advantage to help themselves, to help their family and children. So that's the advantage of Diploma in Counseling Skills. And whoever is here listening today's talk have been part of Diploma in Counseling Skills. So who else can explain better than you all? But just look around. Whom you think you would have missed out in speaking about uh, Diploma in Counseling Skills to them? Take that little extra effort in your neighborhood, in your relatives, because yet the admissions are open. Let them take advantage of this year, because as you very well know, we don't go behind the numbers. But the moment the batch size is complete, we will have to refuse the admissions. And that's what is something makes a person feel, oh my God, I came listening to this and now you're telling no, but what to do? We want a certain small number in a batch so that, you know, the learning is good, right? That's the whole essence of Diploma in Counseling Skills. So as soon as possible, speak to people whom you know can benefit. It can be homemakers, it can be grandmothers, it can be some people who have time in the weekend and yet is a learner. Then I think it's a good idea to guide them to Banjara, we will explain them, we will let them meet the whole team, let them see the classroom. If possible, if they are contacting Anish, she will make sure that they come in some class because classes have already just started. So she can put them in the classroom also, they can experience one of the class and then take their decision. Really wonderful. Children don't get this opportunity, but you all do have. Yeah, so take this advantage, spread the word, as soon as possible before we close down the admissions. And thank you. Have a great weekend and back to Ali. I am back. And we have some very interesting. This is the most interesting part of the session when I get to hear certain things from you. And since we do it through chat box, you get a chance to think and type in your comments and your questions. So I know that they are well thought out. They're not just impulsive. So here we have so many have already come in. Surekha, as usual, has been one of our most enthusiastic Manjarites. And I really appreciate I myself learned so much from uh, her. Surekha says, how can we tap into the spirit of play in order to help them to start learning a potentially dull subject? To digress for a minute, uh, Surekha, uh, we had this international conference of Montessori, Montessori adults, and there was this gentleman called Trevor Iser who came all the way from USA with his family. He had neither studied in a Montessori nor was he a trained Montessori adult, that is teacher. But he had extensively studied the education system in USA when he wanted to put his children in school. And he found the Montessori system to be wonderful. So he has three children, one by one, all three he has put them in the Montessori method of teaching. And then he started observing them. And you know what he uh, did? He decided, He uh, incidentally, he runs a flying training school. He's the chief instructor in it 
flying training school. He started adapting the Montessori methods to train pilots. I won't go into the details of how he did it, but that's just an example to show you that when you want to do it, when you want the children uh, you know, to adapt certain techniques and that motivation and all that, it depends on the age of the child. It depends on the commitment. There are some children who are already motivated, then they want to study, you know, just give them a boost. There are some who are at average and there are some who are just not interested in studies. So each one of them has to be dealt with in a different manner and in a unique manner. From time to time, as we do, Surekha, you and I, we keep discussing so many cases, so many things. I'd love to be part of that process of the wonderful work that you are doing. Asha says, well, I still think even if our syllabus is outdated using the same content or concept as a platform, we can still connect it to the contemporary. As the chat GPT is catching up, a teacher will have to use creativity to package the concept in a way that it can lead to new innovations. Very well said, Asha. That is where the role of the teacher, parent, concerned adult, whatever you are, that's where the role comes in. Don't sit complaining about this so-called, you know, uh, outdated syllabus and this and that. I know I have my comments and criticism about the way our education system is run. But there are two things. One is, as you yourself have said, changes are coming in. So we can look forward to some new ideas, some new innovations by the system, by the government, by the educators and all that. But at the same time, what are we doing about uh, it? If we take the interest and we add on, we don't need to compete against artificial intelligence or chat GPT. We need to learn from it and adapt ourselves to it. And the more you do those adaptations, the more children will be happy with you because children love variety, children love innovation, and children love change. Surekha says, how can we encourage the child to be inner directed and self-disciplined? Start off, as I said, no, Surekha, why do you study? What is the purpose of uh, study? What is the purpose of discipline? Why is it that you have to give up uh, playing outside and come back and sit and, you know, study? Why is it that, you know, you're so fond of that Netflix and this and that, but you limit your hours and you come and make the child come out with whatever it is. Some children do have it and then they do themselves come out with it. If the child cannot, then gently nudge the child and say, this is the reason why you are uh, doing it. If there is an expert, you remember the other day you fell sick and we went to our family doctor. And as we explained the symptoms, the doctor said, yes, I understand what the thing is. This is caused by such and such infection. And this is the treatment that is needed. I'm going to prescribe this thing. I'm going to check your blood sugar levels. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... See with what confidence he spoke. See the authority that he had, the way he could. And he knows that he's doing meaningful work. He is healing a person who is sick. But because he studied well, because he has not only the knowledge, but the skills, that is why he can do it. Now, he may choose to be you know, in a corporate hospital or set up his own hospital and make millions. He may choose to be a government employee where he gets just fixed salary. He may choose to run a little clinic in his garage and uh, treat people and be happy with whatever he's earning. But he has the competence to be able to select what he wants to do. That is what I want you to do, you tell the child, when you grow up. Roshan says, very lucky to have three wonderful children. Daughter brilliant. Without studying, she would get good marks. My twin sons, without telling them, they would study so much so that they have always got flying colors. Friends would be envious how my children, without telling them, would study on their own and do well for themselves. It doesn't come naturally, Roshan. There is something that you would have done. You may not even have realized it. You may not have done it consciously. But somewhere you have laid that seed in your children. You have put that feeling in the child that, yes, I want to learn. And that is the best gift that we can give to the children. And that has to also, you know, match up with what we call as the self-esteem. 
if the child feels worthy if the child feels i am competent i can do things in life i am capable then the child will keep enhancing his skills and his knowledge to fulfill it if somewhere along the line the adults the teacher the parents have put down the child for whatever reason the child loses interest and the child says even if i put in efforts i can't and that brings us to a very very important thing comparing children with others with a sibling with a classmate with whatever it is the moment there is comparison the child's motivation goes down you must encourage every child to compete with himself okay you are not good in certain such subject in the last unit test you got 50% marks you have proven that you can get 50 out of 100 that benchmark you have already reached now how do you compete with yourself to ensure that in the coming tests you can take it up to 55 60 65 maybe right up to 95 maybe only up to 62 it doesn't matter but if the child gets 62 are you willing to appreciate that you have gone up from 50 to 62 which is a 25% increase imagine if you are working in an organization and your efficiency goes up by 25% how happy your bosses will be how happy you will be and that is what we need to do including what i always keep emphasizing upon the system only records and recognizes grades or marks you should record and appreciate efforts like i gave you the example of three steps of uh, the uh, long division and four steps you made an effort by which instead of only three steps you got four steps correctly i appreciate your effort if you continue like this you may get the fifth step correct and then you get your marks but right now even though you are not getting marks i appreciate your effort that is what motivates children to continue to study surekha also says we need to look for opportunities to show students a new picture of themselves where they can see themselves differently and positively yes so many children don't even realize what they are going to we have you know two extremes of children some who live in a delusional world whether i study or not i am going to become an ips officer i am going to become a film star i am going to become this or that those children have to be dealt with very sensitively but remember there are many many more children who are competent and capable but they do not have that confidence level and where did that confidence go no baby is born under confident or with low self esteem it was the adults who brought it down it could be by scolding it could be by not appreciating efforts it could be by comparison it could be by making doomsday prediction you will never pass your board exam why do you even put in efforts and stuff like that sometimes rarely it does help you know if uh, the child takes it up as a challenge i did it when i was giving my board exam and there was this very nasty teacher when i was entering the examination hall for the board exam he stood outside and said why did you bother to come you could have gone and seen a morning show movie you're wasting your time coming and sitting over here you will never pass and i remember walking in by, uh, with that determination i will prove to this gentleman that not only i will pass i will pass with good marks and i got the second highest in my class in that subject which i was not expecting at all but that is rare let's not go by that as an adult you do not put down people that we are very clear about Hmm? Rina says, "If you are good in sports, you are bound to be successful in studies." Yes, Rina, this is something which very few people realize: the significance of sports or any extracurricular activity, for that matter. Some adults somehow seem to be thinking that only academic prowess and that too in the core subjects, as they call it, is an indicator of capability. the amount of learning that takes place uh, in a sports field particularly if you have a good coach who doesn't put down who doesn't compare who keeps encouraging you to try and do uh, things There's so much of life skills that is to be learned and the same person can actually become a leader take up managerial and responsible positions 
because he has taken up responsible positions in his sports team. Yes, yeah, Sheila says, great input, Sally, as always. Every week, it's a pleasure to listen to you. The learnings are reinforced and works as a self-assessment session to assess where I am on the week's topics and take measures as appropriate. Thanks a lot for your appreciation, Sheila. And that is the intention. Any good teacher, master, guru, whatever you want to call them, they do not you know, put knowledge or gyan into your brain. They sow the seeds. So in these sessions, not only from me, but even the wonderful comments, as you see, which are coming from me with viewers, if they become a process of sowing seeds, which help you to start thinking for yourself, even if it's in a different direction, it doesn't matter. But at least you will know that this is what I learned, this is what I rejected, this is what I went on to, and from here onwards, I know I'm on the right track. Vinita says, yes, Ali, one of the best things which my children have developed is the reading habit. Congratulations, Vinita, which is part of them now. Thank goodness. And my kids have grown up now. But yes, it's always challenging to inculcate good habits. It requires a lot of patience. Reading is becoming an extinct habit. We have to take it up on a war footing. And the only way to do it is to start reading oneself. How many adults I get? How many people when they enroll for our diploma in counseling skills and I ask them, one of the questions that I ask them in the initial questionnaire is, how much of reading do you do? And what type of reading do you like? Sad to say, many people say, I don't read. I used to, but I became too busy and now I don't uh, do it. In my free time, I like to read, but I find it easier to go on to Netflix or something else than then sit back and watch. You're doing a great disservice to yourself and at the same time a disservice to any children who look upon you as a role model or who get inspired by you. Sheila says, is it so? I see many children good in sports, not good in academics and hence take the NIOS option. Yes, Sheila, not being good in academics, not scoring marks, is not an indicator that the child is not learning or the child is not performing or the child is not going to be great. If the child have, is poor in one subject and somehow he can't pick up that subject, you know how our system works. You give exams for six subjects, you pass in five, you are declared failed. So that is where concepts like NIOS has come in with a great blessing. You can choose your subjects, you can appear for it whenever you want. You can redo it if you uh, fail and you get your certification. Now, I would like to tell you, since you mentioned NIOS, I know of children who switched over to NIOS because they could not cope with the regular academic system. And they have gone on to becoming very, very successful and competent people in different fields, be it finance, be it technology, be it in studies and research, be it in teaching. And that is how they blossom out. Fiona says, why are some children inherently very less motivated to do anything? I have a little doubt, Fiona, about this inherently less motivated. See, children start their motivation and all that when they are babies, literally. When they see that they are being in, you know, encouraged for something, and discouraged for something. When they see that they are being pushed into something and scolded and pressurized, their motivation goes down. And that happens at a very early age. Once they start you know, losing motivation to learn anything uh, new, it may be a simple thing like potty training. It may be a simple thing like you know, learning how to hold a pencil or a uh, chalk. From there, if the motivation goes down, then it will steadily go down. So you have to start very early. Ah, Sri Devi says, always thankful for our Banjara sir for what we are. Thank you, Sri Devi. But Sri Devi also has a very interesting point. Reading, therapy, meditation, an enjoyable activity for anyone I feel. Yes, reading is a therapy. Reading is like meditation. Reading is like 
enjoying reading is like traveling you remember i told you that when the lockdown came i picked up a book called 100 hill stations of india it had 3 3 pages of each hill station with lovely photographs every night i used to read about one hill station and go to sleep dreaming that i am in that hill station and enjoying the vacation which we couldn't do we couldn't step out of the house but as an avid traveler particularly of hill stations i found that this craving of mine to some extent was fulfilled that is the beauty of reading asha says if a teacher is good and inspires her students then probably she will carry some teaching aids to her class to kindle the interest as well as inculcating few life skills challenging the students to improvise on whatever age she is carrying to set the ball rolling yes this is i am a very strong believer in this that as i told you some children are visual some children are experiential some children are tactile so when you have some teaching aids when you bring something and you show it to them you put up a chart on the wall you you bring some demonstration piece you do an experiment of simple um, things children really learn so well you know it is amazing how experiential learning is far better than that chalk and talk type of uh, learning so rekha says how can we convince a child to start to learn a subject if he is sure that it is absolutely useless and irrelevant in his uh, life i have been through these sort of things very often so so rekha a child says that you know i want to be a pilot i don't want to study social sciences i give him examples of the child who failed in the student pilot license which is the first step to becoming a pilot because he was not good in geography he had neglected all social science uh, subjects i have had people who say that i want to be in the health sector i want to be a doctor why should i study maths and physics today they are realizing that so much of maths and physics goes into the healing most of the medical processes today have been tech, become technology oriented or technology driven if there is a doctor who is excellent in biology and chemistry but has not given importance to methodological and uh, physical uh, sciences they are not so you have to make them understand that somewhere or the other something or the other will come and at that time it will be too late for you to learn who is the author of the uh, book it was this uh, magazine called uh, what is that not the outlook outlook magazine had published that uh, thing many years uh, back i must have been more than 10 12 years old but i picked it up in the uh, this thing came so if you look up the outlook magazine uh, maybe in their uh, website or something you will find this 100 hill stations of india roshan says some parents believe in being strict only then can the child be disciplined on the contrary we as parents believe in giving freedom and allow them to learn whatever they wanted here comes a very important point forced compliance visa we you know inner motivational compliance yes you can be strict you can tell the child i'm not going to serve you dinner till you finish doing this 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 homework i am going to check if your main mistakes i'm going to make you do it all over again the child will follow because the child has no choice but is that learning taking place or only compliance taking place you remember the movie three idiots in which the hero amir khan tells the director of his engineering college ke sir chabuk ke dar se sher bhi stool pe chadh ke baith jata hai when you are whipping the you know, tiger even the tiger goes and pops himself on the stool and people clap but he said tiger ko well trained kehte hain well educated nahi kehte hain do you want your child to be well trained as in an animal or well educated that is what you need to understand right ha hema malni says namaste ali i have observed that adolescence attention span is very short what measures can we take to improve this okay their attention span is very short now this adolescent is a sports person see how much time when that ipl is happening or something how he is glued to the tv set or when he goes for those practice sessions and all that how he wants to go on and on and on practicing he doesn't feel hungry he doesn't realize the time of the day so what do we mean the attention span is short 
attention span directly depends on the interest the inner motivation as i was telling a minute back so the same thing that i have been talking if you can help the child understand that your learning is for your good all round development which will make you a happy competent and fulfilled adult that is where the motivation you know goes up and that has been a lovely session i learned a lot i've made a few mental notes which i'm going to add on to my you know database to be able to work better with uh, children in future from whatever you have told me thanks a lot for being part of this whole process of these uh, sessions my apologies for having come in just a few minutes uh, late i will try to make sure that every saturday i'm with you at the dot of 11 and the next saturday is going to be the 15th of july i've taken up a very uh, you know unusual or a sensitive topic there are situations where you have to take a call is it better to speak out or is it better to remain silent if i speak out i can spoil relationships maybe but if i remain silent the wrong will not be righted so this dilemma comes in very often it can be at the workplace it can be in the family it can be with your partner it can be with anyone so we are going to discuss i want all of you to think explore with your own ideas and come and join us at 11 o'clock next saturday at 15 july on the topic is it better to speak out or to remain silent thanks a lot bye bye